Make a million cash for you flatline Make a master plan, watch it backfire Burn it all down and collect the ashes Build it back, respect your passion Witness to some shit that you shouldn't see And we back with another podcast And you know on who I'm with again It's your boy Hassan Welcome to OPF Media and What's up guys, it's your boy Zion Back again with yet another episode <clears throat> Of Official Society Fashion Fashion, financial literacy and mindset Through the lenses of young creatives and entrepreneurs And today we got another dope Creative and entrepreneur in the building We giving you guys some people y'all need to know about consistently. Like, if you don't know about these people, you need to get on Instagram, get on Google, do your searches, and find out where you can tap in with them. Today, we got Mr. Jerome Teasley, the owner of a black-owned gym. I emphasize that, Hero Fitness, here in Greenville, South Carolina. How you doing today, Mr. Jerome? Good, man. I appreciate y'all having me. Oh, most you. definitely. We want to thank you for coming on our platform, just being willing to be a part of this. We're really grateful for that and helping us, like, push our agenda, spread our message of, like, show, showcasing it. The entrepreneurs and stuff everybody don't know about yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Thank like, you. so like we said, we sending your gym, Hero Fitness. You got a beautiful facility here. So like, let's let's start from the beginning, Mr. Jerome. So how did you even come into like the whole workout world, the fitness world? What what made you even want to start in this space? So originally, um, I started because my mom passed, mm. but I've been working out fit, play sports, football, mm -hmm. track. Um, so I was pretty much fit myself. So I never really thought about, you know, I need to eat right and all of that. So my mom, um, when she passed, she was on like 10 different medications. Wow. And she had, we don't even know if it was a stroke, I'm mean, not a stroke, but a heart attack or an aneurysm. She had both, we don't know which one caused which. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, but she was trying to walk, you know, by herself or whatever. Um, she'll walk the neighborhood. So then just one day I was watching TV and they was talking about eating right, the health benefits. You know, I'm in my twenties at this time. And I still wasn't focused on eating right. Yes. You know, when I ate right, it was to have an advantage over my competitor. Yeah. You know, whether it's football track or whatever. Um, so then it just hit me one day, I'm working and I'm like, man, if she had been eating right, she might still would be here. Yeah. So I was like, okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna help people. And I thought about young people. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, these old cats, you know, they, <laughs> they ain't gonna change. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know we all hate it. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so I was gonna do athletic training and do, go that way. So that's where Hero come from. And I was going to put in them that the hero is in you. You don't have to look outside of yourself. Mm, I like that. So that's where hero come from. But then people my age at the time was um, asking me to train. I started in the park um, training young people. But then people asked me, my age, like, can you help me lose weight? So I started, then they start dropping. Wow. And then word of mouth. Because the results came. Yeah, yeah, word of mouth. Like, I have, to this day, and never advertised, come train with me. Wow. Um, and that speaks volume. I yeah. probably have now at this time maybe twenty five clients. Wow. You know, That's and good. I never have advertised. Oh, That's like word of mouth. Word yeah. of mouth. You said a lot of significant things, Mr. Jerome. First thing you started with like the uh, the thing with your mother, like the way we eat, especially as black people. Like one thing I came to notice, like us black people say, man, diabetes runs in the family. Mm -hmm. This and that running a family, it's the diet that runs in the family. Right. Exactly. Right. It's a it, I, 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 we talk about this all the time. Like this is my opinion. Tradition is not our friend, especially as black people. Because right. right. we keep doing the same thing over and over again in terms of racism, in terms of health, yeah. in terms of finances, expecting different results. Right. Right. So like of that that's just a realization. How do you feel about like the diet thing in the black community? Like we got these staple foods or this staple diet we all try to stick to that soul food. So like how do you feel about like us deriving from that and making better food choices? It's like that's the first step is living healthier and living longer lives. Right. Yeah, I mean you hit it on the head. It's tradition. Like we know what how grandma cook. We always <laughs> been over grandma's house. Oh yeah. You know, we love it. You know, and it tastes good. But the thing is with blacks, 
like we can change our whole diet. We created the the, yeah. the way we eat now mm -hmm. and we made it taste good. Yeah. So we so creative that we can, they can give us macaroni and eggs and make it a pie, you know, mm -hmm. like that's how creative we are. We got slops from the leftovers from just from slavery. It made all these dishes. Yeah. So now all we have to do is do the same thing with good food. Right. You know, we're so creative that we can make it taste good mm -hmm. and it still can be healthy. And that's the thing, cause y'all touched on, on on like some good points, and I wanted to pull up, you know, like some data. Like African Americans, we lead thirty percent in heart disease and thirty percent in cancer. And I never forget when the vaccine came out. Yeah, let me go ahead and get like the vaccine, but that doesn't make you healthy though. You going into the gym and working on your body, cause your body is your temple. That's right. what makes you healthy. On top of that, plus eating. So can you just like emphasize like the importance of? doing like the exercises on top of that eating right though. And I got one more thing to add. Can you talk about how the body is built because biologically it's built to replenish itself. So like in a way, it's a lot of things we don't need to depend on. So I was wondering if you could kind of add that into your explanation. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So like you said, the body is, it, it replenishes itself every single day. Yes. You, if we can eat junk, for years, it still be here. It still be healthy. I got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if we can do that, that just tells you how amazing the body is. We don't need the drugs. You know, I, I'm not knocking doctors or anything like that because at times we're gonna need them. Most of them. Um, but what they try to put in our head with the vaccines, uh, high blood pressure pills, you may need it, but get off of it. Get off of it with how you eat. And like I said, the body's meant to move. You know what I'm saying? Like, we are here to move. We're not here to be stationary. You find somebody who's stationary, they back hurting, their knees hurting. Like everything is hurting on them just because they're sitting at a desk all day. They're not getting up moving intentionally, you know, doing something. But yeah, so it, it is, it's made to replenish itself. Yeah, I got another question. Um, you uh, well before when we uh, started before we started recording, we kind of talked about uh, our mental health a little bit. We didn't deliberately say that's what the conversation was about. We was going down that road, and so I want to ask, like, how do you think uh, physical health coexists with spiritual health and mental health and emotional health? Well, it's it's all tied together. Like, there's no way you can be physically fit without being fit mentally. Mm. Like, even if you just want to look a certain way, you have to see it, you have to be mentally there before you even get there. And then just working out itself, whether you're doing boxing, whether you're riding bikes, whether you're doing push-ups, running heels or whatever, it's going to release so much stress. And we have to release stress. And that's going to help our mental health. Just that alone is going to be big. And then eating right as well is going to help our mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not one one thing like just exercise and still eat junk. Right. Not, I mean, you know, they say you are what you eat, and you pretty much that's yeah. pretty much true. Yeah, you know, if you eat junk, you are gonna feel like junk. Most definitely. Yeah. So we talk. So you talk about transforming people's lives, and we just did a podcast with the future boss not too long ago. Yeah. And he is a professional bodybuilder. He did do a show, but you is his trainer, and he came back home with some medals. Yeah. And so, how does that feel? For you, like, man, I trained him and I got him to where he wanted to be because before he wasn't where he wanted to be, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know? So how does that feel for you to inspire people that have a goal and that have a dream and you're a part of it? Man, <laughs> that, that's better than the money. Right, mm -hmm. yes. Like the impact, I'm more focused on impact when it comes to health and fitness than I am monetary. I like that. To see um, someone come in a certain way I'm gonna tell you, I look at myself as an artist when it comes to the body. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm yeah. serious, like, I, I feel like this is my canvas. I'm gonna chip away. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make this look like this, this look like that. And then that's how I see myself. I don't see myself as a personal trainer. I'm a fitness specialist, one, that's one. But I'm an artist, man. Like, you come in here, I can, I'm gonna change your body. If you stay with it, you listen to me, I'm gonna change your body, and I don't care who it is. That's significant, I love it. I look. Go ahead, bro. I was finna say I got a question about that artist um, philosophy you got because 
I understand you gotta know the different parts of the body. You gotta know what tools work out in the different parts of the body. So would you say that you have to um, become specialized in your certain field as far as like knowing those nuances in order to even get to the level of being an artist? Or can you be an artist first and then, you know what I'm saying, just call yourself an artist, really? No, no, no. I mean, I do think I have a gift to um, basically like make people believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the biggest part of sculpting somebody's body. Make them believe that it's possible. But you gotta you gotta study your crap. And like today I just ordered this book, eight hundred pages, um, just on muscle, the body, how to grow it, everything. And I'm gonna take that book and do it like a class. So you have to keep studying. I've been doing this um, going into the twelfth year. Um, I've been doing 11 years, but I'm studying every single day, every night. I'm still studying. Wow. Listen to that, y'all. Yeah. Study your craft. Do not let up. Study your craft every single day. Yeah, yeah that's where I was going. I was going to pitch off, like, the artist thing as well. Because, like, it's something I'm starting to realize. Like, once you find your thing in this world, you don't have to overcomplicate it. Like you said, I'm not a personal trainer, quote, unquote. I'm an artist. I score people. I like to think of myself as, like, a designer, curator. I bring things together. But... How, how significant was it for you when you find out like this is my thing or this is my purpose, this is what I'm put here to do? Like, what was that defining moment when you was like, I'm gonna stick with this and I'm gonna ride it out. It's not about the money anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just about this way it fulfills me. I'm gonna be honest, bro. I love black people. Mm -hmm. You know, That's so, so this is my vehicle to help us mm -hmm. as a people. <clears throat> of course I train anyone. But I love black people and I love helping us. And so, like I said a while ago, the impact, the impact. And when I got that moment where I seen the first lady, I trained and she transformed and how it made her feel. She got started getting raises at her job. Mm -hmm. um, people that come and train with me, they start being entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So it's the impact of me transforming their body that, that keeps me going. And once I seen that, that's what that's what did it. That was like, okay, definitely. I'm, I'm in the right place. That's what's up. I know that's, that make your heart feel so warm. Yeah. I done had a couple moments like that. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. So, I wanted to ask you, so, you know, most personal trainers, man, they start out with, you know, like, they start out in somebody else's gym. But, man, you got your own kingdom, man. You know, you got your own domain. So, if somebody wants to open up their own dream, gym, like, what is the basis on what they should do and how they can get into, like, them doors? So, <laughs> I didn't do what I should do. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. You learned the hard way. I learned the hard way. Um, so, and I don't regret it. Mm -hmm. So, what I did, I opened during the pandemic. Okay. Really with no money, you know, saved up. You know, I just been doing it. Okay. And I just jumped, man. And I know that's so cliche, but that's what I did. I opened during the pandemic. You know, right in June, right when things start opening back up, people still scared to come. Um, but to do what you should do, then what you should do, save up your money, have enough money for bills for, for the year, um, you know, and go that route. You know, get your, make sure your credit straight and all that is what you should do. But you got to believe in yourself. You got to do it. If you fail, so what? Yeah. You feel one time. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. You hear one time, so if you feel so wet, like if somebody talk about you, they gonna talk about you for a day. Yeah, they gonna go to sleep. They ain't gonna think about you no more. Yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> so just do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Ron really just said something significant. If you're listening, like you don't have to have everything figured out in order to do what you want. You just start, and you'll be surprised when you end up. Me and Zay start recording my Toyota Camry with the phone <laughs> on the dashboard, yep. and, and we we in businesses recording people now. Wow! So just start. That, that that's like the main emphasis. That's what I tell everybody. They be like, I want to do this and this, but I don't know how to do it. Or I want to start a podcast. But I, just tell me what to do, bro. Just start recording yourself. Exactly. Just, like, just start working out. Just start doing whatever you want to do, and yeah. you will be surprised when you end up. Because once you're immersed in it, like you said, you're going to order books. You're going to go meet people. You're going to just learn everything about your craft. Like, the more you learn, the more you do. Exactly. Because like, I seen this post, and 
one dude said, man, it's all about a mindset. If you say it's gonna take you three hours to clean your room, then you know, it's gonna take you three hours. But if you say it's, it's gonna take you 30 minutes, you're gonna get it done in 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so I'm gonna piggyback off of that too, is like you uh, agitation promotes growth. So don't think of agitation or irritation as something bad or negative. Like just understand you gotta go through that in order to get better or in order to move on. I yeah, love like it. That, that's 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 what jumping in it is, cause you're gonna be agitated just jumping in something without all the resources. But that's the only way you could go up. Yeah, and that's that's the same way with gym. You know, if you're trying to develop muscle, it's the stress. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's the yeah. damage that you do to the muscle. Exactly. You know, it's the tension that's on the muscle that's going to make it grow. Exactly. So it's the same thing with business. You know. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then one thing you mentioned earlier was a significant thing is that you build you build like your reputation of hero fitness sincerely of word of mouth. And like one thing me and Zay learned when we was reading books while we was in the midst of trying to find out how to get our podcast started. We read this book called Contagious, like why things catch on. And it said like word of mouth is the most powerful form of marketing. Mm-hmm. Because if I know you and you trust me, you think I'm trustworthy. If I tell you about Hero Fitness, you know, like, it's something to really consider because I trust him. Yeah. So like over over your years of business, like why why do you think word of mouth is so important? And like why have you never tried to like emphasize? I'm pretty sure you have tried like the social media route now in this day and time. But why do you think word of mouth is the, is the most important? And like now in the era we're going in, do you think it's going to become less important or social media? It's going to overtake that. Yeah, it will never be less important. Even, I'm not on social media like I should be. I'm mm-hmm. really just starting this year to try to post every day. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, and then I still just post my clients. But word of mouth is always going to be king. Always going to be king. Even if you're doing social media, you're going to show receipts of somebody that got the results that they're trying to get. Mm-hmm. So it's still going to be word of mouth. They're still trusting that other person to get to you. You know, it's gonna be somebody else that they trust. So before they trust you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's just the way it is. If they don't know you, it's easy. Like you just said, it's easy to trust the person that they know. And then they're like, okay, I can, yeah. I, if, if he or she can do it, they say they good, then I'll go. And honestly, like word of mouth just become way more expensive now because we got social media and the phones now. Like I could, you know what I'm saying, shoot somebody a DM of a picture you posted and be like, oh, I want my body to look like mm-hmm. that. Like you said you want your body to look like that too. Like let's go to one of his classes, you know what I'm saying? Like and before the phones and stuff, you just had to see your homeboy at the grocery store. And like, hey, I, I went to this new gym, you should try it out. But like now, uh, everything is a little bit more instantaneous and concise. And so that, that make it uh, more impactful. Yeah, I agree. So how do you feel, you know, how like the new year, cause I'm gonna go to the gym and get right. So how do you feel when, when people start say, cause I'm gonna go to the gym, but then they don't, be consistent with it. Cause I know you're gonna have like new clients. Oh yeah, Jerome, like let's get right. Then you won't see them like two months later. Then they get to procrastinate. You know, man, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. Yeah. Because I don't have that problem. What? They come, when they come to me, they pretty much stay. Mm, I like that. They pretty much stay. Um, and, and if they leave, I put it on me. Like, mm-hmm. okay, what, what didn't I do to make them stay? Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes I call them, like, hey, you know, how's it going? Is there anything that um, I missed? You know, what what were you getting? And then a lot of times they'll be like, well, it's finance, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But they pretty much stay. Now, the gyms itself, they normally get packed in January. You oh, know, yeah, they, yeah, they, 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 they'll thin out. But um, from my experience, um, if it do be a slow time, and it don't be my client, but for its membership, they don't come in January, <clears throat> beginning of January. Mm-hmm. They come now, like two weeks, three weeks in January. Yeah. They they trying to get a summer body. Yeah. Most definitely. And uh, let me ask you this, Mr. Jerome. What do you think it is about yourself that makes people want to stay or just keep coming back consistently? I think it's, um, I do it out of love, man. You know, love is powerful, man. It's like, I, I do everything. When they come in here, they know I genuinely care about them. Mm-hmm. If they have a, a death in the family, uh, and if I can, more than likely I'm at the going to their house, or it may even go to the funeral. 
you know, but they know that they don't just have a person trained because that's not what I am. You know, I'm a fitness specialist. <laughs> but uh, but seriously, like love, man, I think that's that's the key. Man, that's significant. I was reading this book this week called The Magic of Thinking Big. It was like people, people, uh, people like the most money hungry people don't never get the money, right? Mm -hmm. Because they be so focused on money and they forget that money is just a byproduct of service. Mm -hmm. Like you have to serve people and like genuinely want to help people advance. And then like money is just a byproduct of that. Yeah. But a lot of us get caught up, man, I need money, man. I need to go chase the bag. This and that, yeah. this and that. But who are you helping? But like, yeah. what, what impact do you have? Right. Because with the impact comes comes the monetary gains and all the yeah. other other advantages of like owning something like this or doing something like we doing. I feel like that's something a lot more people have to realize. Yeah, yeah. And it's crazy that you said that because I seen a post by Andre Hatchet and he said because if you need more money, then have a need made business. Mm. <laughs> <A> need based <laughs> business. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So do you think uh, a gym is a need based business? Definitely, definitely. It's definitely a need based. Like some people can work out at home, but a lot of people got to get in the environment. Mm -hmm. And that's how the gym really creating, of course the machines and the equipment, but it's more so the environment. Um, and you find the right gym for you, then it's because of the environment. It's not necessarily because of the equipment, because honestly, like it's a whole lot more equipment that I want and gonna have, but the environment is what keeps people here. Like they know when they come, they come in to work. You know, they they come in to grind, and so it's definitely need based and it's stress relief. And what I think is that like, when I first started coming here, man, it's the culture. Like when I first had came in, man, you had the music jumping. You know, you had Tony with the um, dance. You know, you know, with like the Zoom, like like the Zumba, like just exercises. Like the whole, I feel like a black culture. Like man, I feel like a black love. It, you know, cause it's like I'm in Georgia. And it's like Georgia is nothing but black people, but right, right. but it's like the love that brings us like you know like together. So the atmosphere, exactly, man. The whole like this atmosphere. Yeah. So what I want to say is like, what is your end goal for like Hero Fitness? Like, where do you want it to be in the next, say, ten years or so? Well, it's definitely gonna be a franchise. Tell me. Um, I want to be. I want to have like a main gym, like a big gym in different cities, mm -hmm. but then I want to have hubs like smaller gyms in different parts of the city. Okay. okay. But one main, well, once they join that main gym, if they on this side of town, they can stop at that hub. They don't have to pay nothing extra. You know, that's that's my goal. Okay, so, oh yeah. yeah. And it's gonna happen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah most definitely. And then I, I wanted to uh, kind of touch on that creativity piece uh, that you were talking about earlier again. Cause I think that's um, something significant about your gym in particular is like you a black man and you got a genuine love for black people. And so that kind of pours out into the atmosphere like you were saying. So like you create this uh like this sense of humanity in here where like people don't want to leave because they feel like a human being. They don't just feel like another number mm -hmm. in the system where they come swipe their card and get on the treadmill, you know? <laughs> So it like I I I um I like that because I you emph emphasized the creativity earlier, but like creativity is so multifaceted, it's so versatile, and you create the atmosphere in here. Like right. it's not just something that that was here. It's right, here because right. you're here. Right, and what I love is man, even if it's it like I train a lot of people, but if even if it's not my clients, I love when people come in see somebody they ain't seen in a long time yeah, yeah. and embracing each other. Mm -hmm. Seeing two sisters, um, not physical, but two black women embracing each other out of love, hey, you know, whatever, that do, does me good, man. Like, that's everything. Like, yeah. just the connection, connecting with each other. And then we doing something healthy, you know, doing something good for ourselves. I love it, I love it. Basically, man, it's like your auntie house that you go over like just every Sunday, but you're doing the right thing. Right. Oh, hey, sister, how you doing? Oh, I ain't seen you so long. Exactly. Yeah. That, that humanity is so important to maintain throughout business and like just getting into enterprise and stuff, though, because that's what's going to make people stay, like how you were saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, like, the connections. Um, like, I have um, a lady who owns Sheen Magazine, she uh, work out here. Um, so just by her working out here, she she done connected with so other so many other people that's doing something. Oh, I want to do an interview on you. You know, just the connection that's going on here. 
um, dentist lady who owned a dentist office. And you know, it's just crazy, man. It's like, y'all really seen everything, all the connections that goes on? Like, people that's connecting with each other, and it's black people doing it. Like, we got some people here, man. I'm telling you, like, that's one thing. I actually tweeted this last night. Uh, relationships are worth more than money. And if you don't think so, you just hang around the wrong people. Mm -hmm. yes, because, because, like, that's, if you, it's just like, you can't put a price tag on certain things. Like, you know, like, the feeling you talking about, or, I know so and so that does this, so we don't gotta go mm -hmm. go from this jump or figure out from scratch how we need to get this done. Right, like, that's that's the beauty part. That's the cheat code about life. I feel like yep. it's just having those relationships, and yep. like, the ones you can make last. Mm -hmm. And then I remember that we talked about that one of these days you wanted to make this bit of like a networking, you know, like you want to get in. So is that still in your plans though? Oh yeah, definitely. So my my other goal for fitness. So I have a, I already got it, logo and everything. Yeah. It's called Fit for Business. Mm. Um, it has to come from a Lil Wayne song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Make it even better. Exactly. <laughs> I love hip hop. I love hip hop. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's called Fit for Business and I want to bring different entrepreneurs in, especially black entrepreneurs in to network, man, like to get to know each other. Now, I, I've been to a lot of networking events where it's just like, you hear, they just worry about you getting their cards. They're not really interested in what you got to say. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't like that. So I don't go to those no more. But um, I want a different, like, we got a group now, a group of guys and a few ladies. We all went to the bank together. Mm -hmm. And they sat down. We asked them, okay, teach us um, about banking and why we should join your bank. And they did it. They put us all in the company's room, gave us books and everything. So that's kind of the thing that I want with Fit for Business. Right. You know, just the network. Group economics. Yeah, no, not even trying to get money like join my network and pay this membership. Maybe in the future, I don't know, but that's not my goal. If it's to link up people. Man, it's the value. Mm -hmm. It's the value. Education. Education. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, education. Because we don't know. And we don't know what we don't know. Right. Exactly. That's yeah. the whole thing. We so oblivious. And that's why we've been so behind. Because it's not like we got we don't have access to the things that other people may have access to. We just mm -hmm. don't got access to the information. Like, the, you know, the machines, the hardware is there. But we don't know how to use it. We don't know why it's important. And that's what's, that's what's really important for us. Yeah, yeah. But it's changing. Yeah. We, 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 we getting out there now. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's changing drastically because, like, things we doing, what you doing, yeah. it's like creating a space where it's like, I need to know these people or know someone who knows of these people because if we can listen to this podcast, you go to this gym, you never know who you might hear yeah. or who you might meet because, like I said, it's all about the relationships in this life, yeah. I feel like, and the ones you can keep. But I wanted to ask you this, Mr. Jerome. What makes or breaks a good gym, in your opinion? Mm. Definitely, in my opinion, what makes it is the love. It's the love of the gym. You, you can have a gym, successful gym. Like, I don't been in gyms that's very successful. But, you know, you just dare to get your work out. You ain't think about nothing else. Yeah. Um, and they, they successful. So, but for me, what's going to make mine, it's the love. What's going to break it if I don't show it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's important. I gotta add something because like I'm into combat and stuff like that and I want to know like what you think about combat as a form of exercise and like how it may be or may not be beneficial to our community and like do you dabble in it personally? I don't um, dabble in it myself but what I think about it is yeah man I think that's great like one I love boxing I know you may be thinking like karate or jiu I mean, boxing, karate, jujitsu, yeah. taekwondo, whatever. I love it. I love it. And then, yeah, it's definitely beneficial. We have a um, guy here, his name Brandon. He used to box, and that's what he teach. He mm -hmm. teach boxing classes. I love it. That's what's up. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's it. important for our community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got another thing I think is important for our community, because, like, you said this significant earlier. You was, like, you was in your 20s when you had the dawn on you. I need to start taking care of my body and working out. Mm -hmm. I'm in my 20s now, and I play sports all through high school. So it makes it easier for me to get up and go work out. How do you think, like, what do you think parents should do to, like, implement working out in their children's lives? 
Because it's easier for me to get up and go work out because I know what it's like to be in an intense football workout. Right, right. And you can't put the weight down. Right. But if you never worked out before and you get thrown into like a gym and they be like, Man, you need to you need to do something, it's gonna be hard to first find that consistency or the motivation to even come here. Right, right. But you don't even know the benefits of working out because you never did it before. So like what do you think parents should do to change that narrative, especially in our in our community and just like in general to ingrain health, physical fitness into children? I think um I think the biggest thing that happened with our community is when they took sports out of the community. Mm. Um, like, it used to, how it used to be, it used to be um, a football team over here, a football team over here, soccer, not, not too much soccer, but baseball or whatever. I think sports is a great way, but if it's not sports, you gotta get out there with them. Mm. You know, you gotta get out there, hey, let's go ride a bike. Let's go do this, you know, but it's gotta be outside. <laughs> you know, yeah. you gotta do something. And it, they don't have to come into the gym. It's so much you can do outside that you don't have to be in the gym to do it. Mm -hmm. But I think they just have to get them outside and they have to, maybe they have to go out there with them. Well, definitely. Do you think it's dangerous, like how everything's going towards like a more digital age? Like kids are being raised by tablets these days. Like they're not going outside no more. So like, what's your opinion on that? Everything becoming more digital and people coming outside less, say coming to the gym less, they got Pelotons and stuff like that. <laughs> so like, what's your opinion on, on the digital age and stuff like that? I love the digital age. I don't. I don't have no negative thoughts of it when I think of it. Yes, sir. Although it, there are some negatives, um, because a lot of young people don't do anything because of it. And I had to get on my thirteen-year-old, like, "Hey, we're gonna have to do something," <laughs> you know, if you because she's here with me all the time. So I'm like, "Okay, you have to walk on the treadmill, do the step master." You know, we'll start there. Um, I just had that conversation with her this weekend, so. Um, but the digital age, God, oh man, it's like the community that um, I'm about to build is gonna be digital. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot of things we can do digital as well. Mm -hmm. And if somebody come out, this is not me, but if somebody come out just with a kids friendly digital program, man, it could be huge, huge impact. So if there's any trainers out there, do it. Yeah, million dollar idea, yeah, he just gave it to you. Most definitely, and I wanted to touch on like patience. So you know, you've been doing this for a while, and you've been doing this over a decade now. And sometimes us entrepreneurs, like we get impatient. We want the instant gratification, and we start to talk about how money is not everything. So how was you able to stay patient throughout all the trials and the tribulations? How was you over? How like how was you able to overcome your lows? Well, it's it's the same way I overcome them now. Like I still have them. But the best way to come overcome them for me is you gotta love what you're doing. You're like, and then you gotta look at the end goal, like, it go back to impact. If you just go to, if it's just monetary and you hit a low, then you're like, okay, I'm out. Yeah, but, that's you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This, this, ain't gonna, this is not it. But if you love what you're doing and you have a goal to impact whatever community that you're doing it for, then you'll stay in it. Yeah. You know, you 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 will take on the headaches. You'll take on the, you know, the down feelings and all that. You'll take all that on. But if you don't have that, then yeah, you're gonna bounce. Most definitely, because I remember that me and DJ like we at first met and he said, Don't worry about time, cause when you have a foundation, time will start to go by faster. But when you just don't got no foundation and you're not loving on what you're doing, the time will be dragging off throughout the years. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's crazy how you said when you started when you was twenty. And then it took me 20 years to open up this. So it's just like time just, you know, yeah. went by so fast. Yeah. So fast. Fast as hell. So do you think it's important like to have that foundation, not even as a black man, but as an entrepreneur in general? Definitely. I'm gonna tell you, man, um, what really taught me is when I did my first bodybuilding show. Mm -hmm. It's so much in that, it's so spiritual, so it's so much growth that you get from doing a, doing a show because of the eating, like it's very detailed, very meticulous. Um, the workouts, the sleep, the thinking, all of that just to get on stage for like 10 minutes. 10 minutes, maybe. You wow. gotta push yourself into you know, a deep meditative state. Right. Like, cause that, and you gotta push your body through intense, uh, 
just training. Yep. Pretty much yep. every aspect, no spiritual, mental, like so I, I feel like that's a meditative state you put yourself in for like what, like a month or two months? Yeah, when you three preparing, months. Yeah. Three months when yeah. you preparing, you're in a deep meditative state for three months. Yeah. That's important. And that's three months if you close to being ready. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not even close, that's long ago. That's crazy. Yeah, y'all got anything else? Man, that's it, man. I feel like we dropped a lot of gems yeah. on this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Yeah. Jerome yeah. Teasley, owner of Hero Fitness yes, here in Greenville, South Carolina. So you here in South Carolina, be sure to come by, tap in, get your fitness needs met, get your body sculpted yes, for the sir. new year. Yeah. And uh, y'all got anything y'all want to leave the people with? Man, y'all tap into the gym and man, just thank you guys for listening. And Javon, thank you for thank being you. on this podcast. Like when I yes, first sir. met you, man, we started making like this connection, like this instantly. So just thank you for being on this platform, bro. Yes, thank sir. you. Thank you. Um, yeah. A message I want to pass on, something that's been sitting heavy on my heart today, is just have faith in yourself and have faith in your process because everything you want to happen is going to happen. A lot of that stuff been happening for me, but it just ain't been coming out the way I thought it was gonna come out. You know what I'm saying? So the universe got you. It may not look like how you want it to look, but it's gonna happen. So just maintain faith. Yep. Well, yeah. definitely, Mr. Drunk. You drop the address for them so they can type it in at Google Maps and so know where it comes. Yeah. So you in Greenville is 62 East Antrim Drive, Greenville, South Carolina. Or you can find me on Instagram at Hero Body Creator. Facebook is just their own teeth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Business side fashion, fashion, financial yes, literacy, and mindset through the lenses of creators and entrepreneurs. Yet again, we bring to you another dope creative and entrepreneur. Thank you guys for listening. Always something new on the way. Official side yes, fashion. Out. Respect your passion. Witness to some shit that you shouldn't see. Whisper to yourself what you wouldn't be. Victim to the block where your mama moved. Now your mind state is I'ma do what I gotta do.